Hey, this is Mike Addis. Thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to bring you these videos. Today, we're going to talk about risk and how you measure risk. So we all heard the same statements over and over again. No risk, no reward. That's a myth. And how about this one? The greater the risk, the greater the reward. Does taking big risks equal making big money? No, it absolutely does not. These are old cliches used by Wall Street types or guys getting trying to get you to, to part with your money. So they're saying, hey, if you don't bet big, you're never going to make big. That's total nonsense. I've made tens of thousands of dollars with risking practically no money at all. We're going to talk about that in this video, so don't forget to stay to the end of the video and we'll cover all these topics in less than 10 minutes. How all investments are measured. Risk is the key to all investments. So when financial Wall Street types talk about taking big risks, they always equate this with a big reward. In my world, I take many minor risks using small amounts of money. To me, they're small amounts of money. To you, they may be big. Therefore, small amounts like $10,000 bets will often give me a $20,000 return or more. I've taken five and $10,000 bets and made $40,000 and $50,000. When I see a multi-million dollar deal, I weigh the risk associated with my bet. My bet is called an investment in this case. So investing is a little like gambling, except the odds are in my favor, not the casinos. Therefore, taking big risks is a lot like taking big bets on the outcome. My big bet, like $100,000 to $1 million plus, are relative to much bigger players who take $1 million to $100 million bets. Some of these big guys take $1 billion bets, like Warren Buffett, for example. So Warren Buffett takes a $10 billion bet like I take a $1 million bet. So his bet is based on the amount of cash he has on hand. Because if he's sitting on $122 billion and takes a 10% bet, that's a $12 billion bet. It's a huge amount of money. But does he have much risk in the, in the play when he takes the bet? I don't think so. He has 60 years of experience on taking bets. Is he wrong sometimes? Yeah, he's wrong. Everyone's wrong. No one's 100%. My definition of leverage, because leverage is important in the risk factor, is taking borrowed money. So in the above example, Buffett doesn't borrow any money. He lends it at a fat percentage. So in other words, he may borrow money, he may lend out money, excuse me, at 8 to 10%, and then he takes an equity position in what he's investing in. The risk I take is relative to the amount of leverage I use. So today, I have buildings constructed for 100% cash. I have no leverage. I have no mortgage. I have no reduced risk. I use trusted family members as general contractors on these projects. Therefore, I borrowed no money and have a zero mortgage. Where's my risk in the above example? In other words, this property, which has been in the family for over 100 years, will continue paying dividends. So dividends in the form of rent and housing for the family. So therefore, I have reduced my risk. I have not eliminated it. Is all risk related to leverage? I take measured risks without leverage, which means without borrowed money. Therefore, my inexperience with new partners and vendors needs to be measured and protected. Therefore, I use platforms to protect my risk. I call them insurance platforms like PayPal, eBay, and Amazon. So instead of buying direct from the vendor, I have them go through these platforms. Why? In the case of an $8,500 purchase I just made the other day, the vendor wanted to go outside the eBay platform. He wanted to sell it directly to me so he doesn't have to pay the 8 to 10% platform fees and the PayPal. But I said no. He wanted to protect his 13% increase in profit, so $8,500 would have given him another $850 in profit back to him. I went through the eBay platform, I told him, so we could build a relationship over time. By using the platform, I reduced my risk. Another $26,000 purchased the day before is with a trusted supplier. I didn't use any platform, I just wire transferred him the money. But when I received the product on the $26,000 I invested, $14,000 of it was no good. The vendor is licensed and fears losing that license, so I have knowledge and information on my side. For example, one, he's afraid of losing his license for selling me an inferior product. Two, I've been a good customer for six years, cash paying customer. And three, acceptance of wired funds is the, in the act of committing fraud, of giving me misinformation, is a crime. 
So how do I reduce my risk? Firstly, I have the law on my side. Secondly, my supplier does not want to lose his license for the fear that he can't continue in business. Thirdly, I'm a good cash paying customer. So we have a history together. Fourthly, I will ask for a reduction in my payment of the $26,000 and I'll probably end up making more money because he'll reduce it. And lastly, the reason why he reduces my costs and gives me the credit immediately is because he doesn't want the product back. None of my suppliers want product back. They're in business to sell product, not to take it back. I know my risk before entering any transaction. Therefore, I eliminate all risk if something goes wrong. So knowledge and experience play a key role in risk reduction. Therefore, using these tools along with non-leverage without loaning money brings my risk factor way down. I never, and I quote, bet the ranch by using all my capital, but only a small portion of it. Therefore, I always have ample cash reserves on hand. So I use these tools to reduce risk. I can't have 100% risk-free deals. Even if I buy government bonds, you never know if the government's going to end up having problems too. It's reduced risk, maybe 100%, but there's no money in it. So deleverage, which means not using borrowed money, insurance, I can buy insurance by using other platforms as I gave an example, eBay and Amazon and PayPal, those are my insurance policies. The law, so knowledge of the law, my own knowledge and experience, and laser-like focus combined with my greatly increased cash reserves. This reduces all my risk. Risk reward is an old myth statement used to scare people. I am not afraid to reduce risk. Therefore, I have knowledge and information on my side along with ca cash reserves, ample cash reserves. This is Mike Addis. Thanks for joining us. It's always our pleasure to bring you these videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to check out our blog, which we've been doing this for a couple of months now. You can go to Maddis, M-A-D-D-I-S, Cash, C-A-S-H, dot com. And you can check out our YouTube videos. Just go to Mike Addis YouTube channel or our Instagram posts under Mike Addis 2020. Thanks again. Have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.